What's going on guys? I'm Tomas and today I am going to make my own Apple Fusion Drive. I am using a 250 gig Toshiba 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive and a Samsung 830 series 256 uh, SSD. I'm going to be putting all of this into my 2012 non-retina MacBook Pro uh, 2.7 gigahertz with 16 gigs of RAM. Anyways, I'm using the OWC data doubler in addition to all of this. This is the part of my video that I'm going to add a disclaimer. I'm not going to be screwing anything down while I put everything in the data doubler with the mechanical hard drive, also the SSD. Nothing will be screwed down. Everything's going to be free floating in there while we go through this process. That being said, if you are going to do this and have this as your daily driver, I highly recommend that you screw everything down. That, that goes without saying, of course. Okay, now that that is done, everything's in there, let's get started. I'm going to want to boot into recovery. I've made a copy of Mountain Lion OS X using Lion Disk Maker. Uh, a link to that application will be in the description of this video. While powering on, hold down Option, you'll see that Mountain Lion's recovery disk will appear. Go ahead and select that. Select your language. And from here, we're going to hold off and work from the menu bar. With the menu bar in mind, go ahead and go up to Utilities. And from there, select Terminal. Now it's time to start getting dirty. The first terminal command you're going to want to type is disk util space list, all lowercase. This is so we can figure out which two disk drives we're going to fuse together in our fusion drive. Here in my example, my disks are going to be named disk 0 and disk 1. Disk 0 is my SSD and disk 1 is my mechanical drive, as you can see here. More than likely, in your case, your disks are going to be named the same as mine, but we do this as a precaution to make sure we're merging or fusing the correct drives. Okay, now we're ready to create or fuse these two drives together. To do so, we're going to type disk util space cs space create all in lowercase space fusion with an uppercase and then the two disk drives that are respective to what you have or what we discovered in the first previous step. Let that run for a minute and we have successfully fused together these two drives. Now it's time to create a core storage volume. So from here we're going to want to get the volume group ID. To do so we're going to want to type it disk util space cs space list all in lowercase. Now that we got the logical volume ID number, we're going to want to highlight it and copy it so we can enter it in our next terminal command. Since the volume ID is copied to our clipboard, we can now create the core storage volume by typing disk util space core storage in camel case space create volume camel case again. Um, paste the volume ID here, JHFS plus, and then I'm going to name this fusion with the quotation marks and then I want it to be 500 gigabytes, so 500 G. In your case, if you're doing one terabyte, it's gonna be 1000 G, et cetera, et cetera. Just let that run, it runs really quick, and now you have a Fusion Drive, so let's go ahead and exit this and go into Disk Utility and make sure that we do actually have one physical drive, or as the system sees it, one drive. We do indeed have one physical drive. So, through the magic of video, I'm gonna go ahead and install uh, OS X Mountain Line 10.8 and then update to 10.8.2 and we'll just go ahead and continue this. You won't have to sit through it because again, the magic of video. Let's start this portion of the video out by doing a quick reboot test since the install was successful. I don't want you to leave yet. I want you to stay and watch my whole video for the actual bread and butter. But as you can see here, the restarts are reasonably fast, clocking in at 14.9 seconds. With the reboot, we have to do a shutdown, so here we go. We're going to start this out, and this is quite fast. I haven't purged anything or done anything of that nature, so this is going to clock in at around 9.5 seconds. And now since it's off, we've got to do a boot up test, so without further ado, let's get this out of the way and rock and roll. This one's going to clock in at about 16.2 seconds, which is excellent. It's SSD speeds. All right, now time to test the actual speeds that we're getting on this Fusion Drive. I'm going to go ahead and prove to you that I do have the two drives installed in here. and We're going to go through my system profiler and, and look at the different negotiated link speeds and link speeds of both drives and RPMs, etc., etc., so we can get all that nonsense out of the way. 
Here you'll see the mechanical hard drive is a negotiated link speed of 1.5 um, in addition to being connected to the Intel chipset 7 which is capable of uh, SATA 3 speeds or 6 gigabits per second. Also you'll notice that this is a 5400 RPM hard drive. And just to make sure my Samsung 830 series SSD is in fact negotiated at 6 gigabits per second. This is probably the most interesting part about this process. As you can see here, the system profiler only notices or only sees one physical drive. I've done RAID setups in my MacBook Pro before and it does see both of the other volumes in addition to the RAID array that has OS X installed on. All right, enough of all that. Let's test how fast this, this thing really is. Um, as you can see, I'll go through the steps just to show you that I am, in fact, running black magic disk speed test on this fusion drive. This was a surprise to me because I thought the mechanical hard drive would slow down the speeds but as you can see here this in fact is running at Samsung's um, claim speeds which are around this. Uh, as you can see here it's getting around 390 write and about 475, 480 read. This is very impressive. This is a game changer actually. You can you can purchase a 256 like I've done and in addition to that, add a 750 gigabyte hard drive and essentially have one terabyte of SSD space. With that being said, you do not have to purchase through Apple to do this. I think this is a great option for OS X users and I only see this getting better. The only thing is, is that I wish that I would have had a 7200 RPM hard drive. Maybe that would have boosted the speed a little bit, but I don't imagine so because these are the max speeds that I'm getting on the SSD itself. That concludes my video. The last thing to do is break this fusion thing apart. Uh, to do so, boot into recovery. Uh, do the same steps as that we talked about before by going through the menu bar and opening terminal by typing disutil space cs space list all in lowercase. From there, you're going to get the logical volume group ID number. And then from there, you're going to write or you're going to type into the terminal disk util space cs space delete space and then paste the logical volume group ID number and there you go. Uh, thanks for watching my video guys. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, please share with your friends. Um, I'm not asking for likes or subscribers. So uh, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for watching.